What's going on, everybody? Happy Saturday. Happy Halloween early. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your Halloween out there trick-or-treating with the kids or going to some uh, grown-up parties out there. Believe it or not, it's the third time I'm trying to make this video because I keep forgetting part of this stuff's on Facebook and people keep ringing my Facebook. So at any time, if you guys hear something ringing, I'm going to try to close it down because I'm not trying to do this video a fourth, fifth, or sixth time. Um, and it's basically people just calling off a messenger on to here. So if you do hear that ahead of time, I do apologize. But as promised from overtime, I'm going to go into a more in-depth look at the Panini Redemption Court case. I want to say this has been going on for over two years now. I want to say it came out in 2019. I know I touched on it last April, May, June time frame, somewhere around there. And there's been a lot of things that have been talked about. A lot of people won't talk about it because of their affiliation with Panini. There's certain um, people that have podcasts or businesses and YouTube channels, whatever else they got, and they have affiliation with Panini. And, you know, it should be a question that they ask. What are you doing about this? Why is your attorney saying this or that? But it doesn't happen. I mean, it just goes with the same thing with a lot of what you guys bring up about people who have uh, paid sponsorships and they won't talk about the people that are paying them to run their ads type deal. So I figured I'd bring this up. As always, I look forward to reading the comments down there. Let me know what you think after I get done here. I'm going to go over a lot of the facts and then I'm going to move into, you know, some of my opinion onto this at the end. Uh, like I said, this could be lengthy, so if you gotta hit pause, go get some food, something to drink, please do so. All right, so as I stated, about I want to say it was like March, April of 2019, there was a an individual who had some uh penny redemptions. I think they were out for like two, three years, and they weren't getting anything. Now, there's been a lot of stuff that I've read, so I'm going to try not to mix it. I'm going to use what I know for fact. I know some people have uh, claimed in this, because it's now, um, what do they call that? Where uh, Motion to where everybody can join their case on to. I, I forget what it's called. Well, anyhow, other people were claiming, you know, they were offered Panini points a year ago, still haven't gotten them, and all this other stuff, so... Like I said, with Fanatics shutting down, we don't know what's going to go on. People could uh, backdoor cards out of there that are just sitting there. there there's all kind of ideas behind it because it won't be a first time where a company has gone out of business and people walk out with certain things or we're on a decline and people get cut or lose their jobs and they're like, oh, you know what, I'm just going to take this with me type deal. And then things go out. I mean, just like that, it was the George Bush uh, Tops baseball card. Originally, it was only given out to people in the White House and stuff, but it's there was more circulated. Okay, okay, got off on my tangent. So, um, with this, the, it moved into two people that started their uh, motion on to it. Now, I know more and more people have been added to this uh, case. It went in front of the federal court system, but because it wasn't considered over $5 million, it got pushed back, and now the uh, Dallas, Texas uh, court system is going to have to handle this. And it, it's quite interesting. So uh, if you think about them losing their licensing, the poor customer service that everybody talks about across the board, it's only going to get worse. And redemptions, to me, have always been a very bad idea. You never know when you're going to get them. They give you that guarantee, you know, onto it. If we you can't get it, we'll substitute it, blah, 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 blah. Well, now they're going even into some crazier bylaws. So let me pull this up on the screen here. Let's see if I can, I don't know if I can do any bigger ones. Let me see here. Ooh, all right, let me take this down. I'm, I'll get another one up here. I want to make it to where everybody's able to see this pretty well. Oh, I just did a boo-boo. All right, that's about as big as it's going to really go. All right. All 
All right, I'm gonna expand this again. All right, so th these are some cutouts of the motion and what's being said back and forth. Basically, Panini's argument is that there is no contract between Panini, an upstream manufacturer, and the plaintiffs in the case. They're basically coming out and saying the plaintiffs are not supported by any con consideration because they did not buy the product directly from Panini. One guy got his redemptions from Brakes. Another guy bought it from his local card shop. So it all falls onto that card shop and that breaker, which is not going to fly in court. I really think the courts are going to see through this, but I think it's also going to be wrapped up for a very, very long time. Okay, under Texas law, it says there's no uh, privity of uh, contract between upstream manufacturers like Panini and downstream purchasers like the plaintiffs. And this is where it talks about they bought their unique redemption cards from intermediate retailers and distributors. I don't know why they call it unique redemption cards, because they're in a box. And if they're going to start saying that, you know, there's no contract between that, well, okay, so if I buy it directly from you, still have my receipt, how do you know that redemption's not is from that box? You know, it, it really starts making you wonder how they're going to do it offhand and this is part of the reason why panini has put on their boxes like two autographs and three memorabilia on average because they don't want to be held responsible if it's missing something now back in the day when i was a breaker it was missing something we always got something back from them was it a top line person or anything when we knew it was a crappy case no but you just take it and you move on like, well, at least they sent something out. You know, it sucked for the people in the break and that, but at least they mailed something. All right. Plaintiffs further admit that they did not pay any money or anything else of value to Panini Exchange for the redemption cards at issue. It almost sounds like that if you didn't pay money to Panini for that redemption card then you're not getting it. Why have them in a box? And, it, you know, you can sit there and think about, can you go and sue the athlete for not signing stuff? I don't know. I don't know what the contract that Panini has with the athletes are, to be honest. Is there a set amount of time? Is there, you know, what, what all the, really, the contracts are in there? And they're saying that the alleged contracts between these guys and Panini are not enforceable as a matter of law. Well, I guess they really want to keep digging into it, but you're making yourselves look bad for your last few years of doing product. At the same time frame, you're going to make a lot of uh, collectors upset, and they're just not going to buy the product. And the people that do, you know, I, I don't know. What happens with, um, like, LaMelo Ball Autos if he doesn't sign all of his cards out there? You know, Durant, that's another big one out there with redemptions. I've seen Luca redemptions before. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the big names. But those are the ones that are like recently really hit me. I'm sure there's more, especially with football and everything else. But, you know, it, it makes no sense what they're trying to pull here in the court case. And you're just going to upset the people that are buying that product. And to me, I, I was upset when the redemptions first became a thing because we never knew when they were going to get fulfilled. I was a person that would watch the breaks to see what who was redemptions, and I would stay away from those teams because I was not going to play the game. Granted, Upper Deck had you know a lot of Jordan and LeBron autos, and I could say that I did have a LeBron that sat there for, I don't know, four or five years, and they hooked me up. They really did with what they gave me. And it was way beyond the value of the card because I waited so long. So I respected that. But with this here, I think they're basically putting their own foot in their own mouth type deal because you just make yourself look more and more bad across the board. All right, let's move on. So this here it talks about the Odell Beckham Jr. Redemption card. I'm guessing this is the NT. I'm almost positive that the NT was a redemption card. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 
it was the select football it says there select football and it says where he bought it from it says Brashear did not purchase these trading cards for panini who is the upstream manufacturer again they're trying to get away with having to fulfill these and that's just a wrong answer and it talks here about the other guy kitchen and he got his uh from case breaks and again it's just like they didn't buy it directly from panini so if i buy my first off the line from you how do you know that that redemption's in that box or not? I mean, I know there's a lot of times there's a stamped indented uh, number in there, and then you also got the UPC, but unless they know exactly what's in every single box, how do they know? Uh, this is the same thing. It's just a bigger piece of it. All right, this is the part here that's really, you know, in question on to it. It talks about Mr. Brashear did not pay any money or anything else of value of Panini in the exchange for the redemption request. No, but whoever he bought it from bought it probably from you. And the thing is, uh, before Panini started selling direct to consumer off their website like they were, it went to a distributor at all times. And now that I think about it more and more, this might be the loophole that comes down to it because... Panini was not direct to consumer for the longest time. You had to go through a distributor in order to get it. And this should be something that they put out to them because was it maybe the last two or three years is when they've real I can think of them really doing direct to consumer with hobby related only product. So if that's the fact, Odell Beckham Jr. 2014, I don't remember them selling boxes back then on there. If I'm wrong, somebody please hit me in the comments section, but I don't recall it. I've only ever remember buying the stuff direct through a distributor or through like David Adams, Blowout, Layton, Steel City, you know, those guys there. If you have no other option but to buy from them, how does that, how would I buy it from Panini Direct? And by them pushing this off onto the other people that bought it directly from them and saying, no, they're the ones that owe it to you, that's going to wrap a lot of things up in loopholes across the board. Bad. And it talks about kitchen and painting money either. Right, I think that is the end of this. Let me pull it down real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one more. I'll pull it up. All right. The plaintiffs allege that they created a contract with Panini by simply submitting the redemption code online, which you're supposed to do, or mail it in. But the mere submission of a redemption request does not form a bonding contract. That's what Panini's saying. Again, they did not pay Panini anything in value in exchange for the autograph cards they hoped to receive. But yet in your boxes, you're telling me I'm supposed to receive this stuff. Then you change it on average. And I, I'm not too sure and if anybody can has like a uh, older, like this year's NT or iMac or Flawless, does it say that you will get X, like five autographs, four mem per box or whatever it is? If anybody can recall that, please put that down in the comments section because I didn't really open any this year. But if they're still using the word on average... You know, then the same time frame, you're telling me I'm supposed to get 10 cards per pack, one pack per box. I only got nine. Where's my 10th card? Oh, but he'd be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, we, we messed up. They'll just send you some base card or something out there. Probably something that's not even serial number that was meant to be for reproduction on a damaged card or something. I don't know. This really, really upsets me the most because Panini cards sell for a crap load of money. When you start looking at RPAs and everything like that. Granted, Panini didn't make a ton of money until they started sending, selling direct to consumer because guess what? They saw everything going up. Hey, let's not just do first off the line. Let's do some uh, direct to consumer instead of, you know, getting $200 a box from the distributor. Let's make it 1000 or $1,500. we will do Dutch auctions. Let people set their own amount of money for it. And they got more and more money that way. And that's another reason why a lot of things got drove up in price, just not because of the surge and everybody buying it up. But that, that's another reason we're really with it there. Okay, I'll pull this back down here. 
And if you ever do really look on the back of your redemption cards, I couldn't find one, and the scan I found is very, very hard to read. I'm going to see if I can pull this on my other side here. Give me a second. So it says, Value Collector, reservation for this card can be secured in your name when you submit your request to Panini. The redemption card must be redeemed by the expired date. I've never agreed with that because these products sit on shelves. Having a two-year stable life or uh, stable life, wow, shelf life onto it's just unrealistic. It should be ten years or something like that. I don't say a lifetime of the product because we all know there's going to be something that happens to where a player can't sign, like something unforeseen, like they die. And a lot of collectors have come out saying, why well, put, put it in there if you can't get the autograph? I completely agree. It's because their contract says they have to have X amount of product per year. And they're just going to keep pushing and pushing and pushing it. Uh, you could also mail it in, it says there. But here's the part that I wanted to read. This redemption must be postmarked at least two weeks before the expiration provided in the back of this card. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. Redemption cards are made available as they are received. I understand that Panini America will send me a comparable card in its place if the specified card is not available to ship within four, mo four months, eight months. You have to circle one. If no time period is selected, eight months will be assumed. The exchange card will not be returned. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Did I say this exchange card will not be returned. No reproduction or copies of this redemption card will be accepted. Blah, 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 blah. Penny is not responsible for lost, illegible, all that stuff, you know, postage due to mail. All right. Close this out. So, there, like I said, there's that's just a lot to grasp overall. And to me, when you dissect this, like, I think it was like originally like a 48-page document. I'm sure it's huge now. But it's just as if they're like, hey, we don't want to be held responsible for it. These people won't sign. What are we going to do? Well, do your job. You know, that's what you promised your customer. And when you won't go back for your customer, that's bad. Redemptions have been the worst evil out there ever since they came out with them. Now, I do remember like early, I want to say 90s, you had the Shack Mystery Redemption where you mailed it in. You got the Shack Upper Deck, uh, what was it, the 1B, I believe, or 1A. I can't remember, you got one of the two in the mail. Then you had Tops that had the, you know, the Tops Gold sets you could get and stuff. You pulled a little Redemption. But they always honored that stuff. But when we started saying, we'll pro we're, you're entitled to this card here in Redemption, now coming out with this, it's just bad. I mean... Panini basically filed a motion for a summary judgment attempt to further whittle down the redemption uh, class action onto it. They're saying redemptions are not contracts. But then how do you explain me missing a card in my box or an autograph or whatever it may be? I'm sure some smart lawyer out there for them would say, well, we'll just give you a card that you're missing. But the breakdown might not be right. Or they'll just give you, like, some guy that was, you know, because right now if you look at Panini products across the board, if you played in the sport at least a month, you could sign because they're just throwing everybody out there in autographs, not like it used to be back in the day. But, um, you know, just their arguments saying redemptions are bought from companies other than Panini. There's no contract between Panini uh, between the actually the redemption holder or the customer and Panini. That's kind of messed up. The second argument that I don't really like is that collectors did not pay additional money to Panini for the redemption at the time they were submitted. So if I bought it from you direct and I submitted it, I shouldn't have to pay any money to Panini. But what they're saying is that Panini already received money for the product from somebody else. That person then sold to somebody else and somebody else. There's been a money exchange along the way. But they say that's still not a contract because it's been chopped up the whole way down. I don't know. I know a couple of you guys are lawyers on to here, so I'm going to be really curious to see. I know some of you guys are going to write me about four or five paragraphs. I will read it, I promise. 
Because it's always interesting to hear on to, because I mean, I did a little bit of uh, criminal justice for a bachelor's degree just because it's quick. So some of this stuff I understand. But when you start digging into it more, I'm just like, no, no. I don't know. I mean, what what do you guys think offhand? Do you think Panini should be um, obligated to fulfill those redemptions regardless? Do you think that the expiration date should change onto it as well? I mean, I understand there should be a shelf life onto it, but if you really look, and I still I still think this is the worst thing Panini's ever done with the white and black boxes. And just so everybody understands, the cards you're getting in there, like say you get an iMac. Giannis autograph right there's no serial number the reason why that was an extra card that he signed in case people started submitting them back because of damage so I mean it all they're doing is putting a little white box black box one on one sticker thing onto it and calling it hey there you go to me I, I it just screams wrong to me it really does I would rather them say okay here's your options <laughs> One, we'll pay you market value for that card, which we know they're not going to do. Two, you could have X amount of credit. You want a box, you know, say I had a LaMelo Ball and or NT was live. Um, contenders. We'll just say the base contender is selling for 1200 you know. Hey, we'll give you a, you know, a box credit of X amount. These are the boxes we currently have in stock. Please pick one. You know, I could see doing that. Or, you know, say, hey, here's a list of stuff we have in stock that comes in that value. Pick one. Now, I know if you do that graciously and it goes over and over and over again, you know, you put in your order of preference. Hey, here's 10 cards. Put them in order of preference, 1 through 10. If we can't get one of them, we'll get back to you type deal. There has to be an easier solution out there to that. With all the masterminds and technology we have out there, and this, the best thing they could do is say no binding contract. That just looks bad on you. It really does. I mean, kudos to their, I guess, their legal department for trying to spin this out even longer. And I guarantee you they will. They'll spin out way past 2025. But he'll lose those licenses. And then, you know, they'll still be in their UFC, their soccer. Um, i trying to think what else. I don't, well, they won't be able to touch baseball. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was something else they were into. I can't remember offhand. They'll still hit those other areas like that. Just like, you know, any other company goes down low with this. I mean, we're still waiting to see what Tops does. But at least Tops. I can say I always get my stuff. I mean, it might be three to five years. I just wait. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think offhand in the comments section. I'll respond back to you to it all. I just wanted to bring, if you didn't know about this, I wanted to bring it to light. Because this is one of the biggest reasons why I watch breaks before I get into them to see who the redemptions are. And I'm like, oh, heck no. Heck no. Now, if I do pull a redemption out of a box... Normally, if it's something big, I'll hold it. So, say the shelf life on it's like two years. Sorry, I picked something up. I dropped. Um, what I'll do is I'll wait till about a year and a half. I'll keep watching and I'll look on eBay to see if it comes live. If it comes live, I'll redeem it. If not, then it's a hard decision. I have to sit there and think, well, how much money do I have invested in this to take the gamble? Or do I just, you know, sell it outright? Well, now if you sell it outright, I don't know how many people are just going to stop buying redemptions, too, with that same hope. Pretty crazy stuff. I will keep this updated as I see stuff come about this. Um, but I wanted to put this out there for a lot of people that might not have known anything about this. But it's been going on for a while. Like I said, I want to say it came out like early or like spring 2019 with the case originally. And I know I touched a lot a little bit last year. And it was time to bring it again to light when this came up because it just shows bad customer service, bad publicity. They know this stuff's going to get out across the hobby. Social media is different now than it was just six months ago. You know? All right, everybody. Hey, appreciate y'all watching the video.
I will have another one out here shortly uh, this week, and it's going to go off of an old, what do you call it, uh, multiplication table on trying to figure out values of like your different colored parallels and stuff. It was something that came out in 2019. So uh, hopefully that'll be a little bit helpful to everybody too, trying to find values on cards. It looks like it's pretty much worked here recently, but we'll see. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good rest of your weekend, and I'll see you later.